A lot of people think that if you have faith, that somehow if you live by faith, you'll be immune to your feelings. That somehow you, you, you shouldn't let anything affect you. That any sign of tears and sorrow and grief and pain and devastation is somehow a failure of faith. But the Bible doesn't teach that. Many of the greatest people in the Bible wept. Abraham wept when he stood at the tomb of Sarah, his wife. We know that Joseph wept when he was reunited with his brothers after the family had been so divided and he had been estranged from them for years and years and years. And when he finally revealed himself, they all joined each other and, and grabbed each other and they wept. The Bible said that Hezekiah, when he received the news that he was going to die, set your house in order, he wept. The scripture said that Paul in Acts 26 said, I serve the Lord with many tears. And we know that even Jesus at the friends, uh, at his friend's gravesite, Lazarus, Jesus wept. He was moved. He was God. He was all powerful. And yet there was something that made him weep. He wept because he felt the emotion and the sorrow of the moment. And so when you understand that, Ecclesiastes said there's a time to weep. Psalms 30 and verse 5 gives us a great promise about weeping. He said, weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. If you have a, a, a night of weeping, you will have a dawn of faith. There will be another season of joy if you won't give up in the night of weeping. As a matter of fact, there is a weeping that can go beyond normal grief and you begin to enter into unbelief and self-pity. That's why God got angry in Numbers chapter 11 when the people of God were in the wilderness and they began to weep and say, we wish we were back in Egypt. And God said, that's not a weeping of sorrow. That's a weeping of unbelief. The tears, the tears don't have hope in them. The tears don't have faith in them. And it's all right to weep, but you weep knowing a season of joy will return. In the second book of Samuel, chapter 5, the Bible talks about David, and he was in the valley of Raphaim. And Raphaim is a Hebrew word that means giants. It translates giants. He was in the valley of gigantic trouble. And the Bible said he got under a, uh, a weeping tree, which the Hebrew word is baka, B-A-C-A. -A. And as he was under the, see the picture. He's, he's, in a, he's under a weeping tree. He's got gigantic problems. He's in a valley, a dark, deep valley, and he doesn't know what to do, and he feels overwhelmed. And suddenly, the word of the Lord comes to him, and the word of the Lord says, listen for the sound of rustling above the weeping trees. Because when you hear that sound, David, advance quickly. The Lord has gone before you to give you the victory over your enemy. In other words, he said, David, there's a sound above the sound of your weeping in your lowest valley surrounded with gigantic problems. And if you will listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit, he will not leave you in the valley weeping. But there's a sound above the sound of your weeping that's saying victory is coming. I'm going to restore unto you what the enemy has taken. I will you shall recover it all. And if you can't recover it, God can replace it with something even better. But the point is, there will be another season of joy. God will wipe every tear from your eye. God will take what the enemy meant to destroy you, and he will get glory out of it. If you believe it, say amen. You will never receive a miracle feeling sorry for yourself. At some point, you've got to come up out of the tears of unbelief and self-pity and say, I'm crying, but I'm also believing that if weeping endures for the night, joy is coming back to this family, to this marriage, to this life, to this situation. Clap your hands if you believe it and say praise the Lord.